Go into your exercise folder and open up an image that begins with 609. A couple of cute kids in the kitchen with mom cooking, except for one problem, there's no mess. Kids in kitchens equal mess, and they should. Kids should have fun in the kitchen. This chapter is not about kids in the kitchen, obviously. It is all about curves. Now, I've done a chapter in this title on levels, a kind of a how'd you do kind of look at levels. Let's do the same thing here with curves. But let me recommend something to you, please. Go, if you haven't, and take the chapter on levels. You don't have to. It's not required. But it will give you a better understanding of how curves takes levels to another level. That sounds pretty good. Another level. So let's start by coming down here to the adjustments. Go to levels just real quick. So in levels, you have three sliders on input, and you can change or manipulate tonal values or colors to achieve some actually pretty cool results. But you are locked into a line, I call that the railroad track, and the train has to stay on the track. Now let's get out of here and go to curves down here, up to curves. Curves is a different animal, of course, in how it looks, but it is much more powerful. You can do everything in curves that you could do with levels, but you can do a whole lot more. For example, we were kind of locked onto that train track, weren't we? Well, if I come down here and move this one, I can achieve the same results that I would see in levels just by moving that. Same thing with over here. Now, we don't have a mid-tone slider, but I can add one just by clicking. Click right on that line. Now, if I move that up or down, I'm lightening or darkening the image exactly like levels. So actually what I have here is levels. I might as well go back and just use that. The beauty of this is, is number one, we're not confined to a track. Okay, we don't have to stay on the train track. And number two, we can move it anywhere we want. And number three, I can add more points. Now I'm not doing anything important yet. I'm just trying to demonstrate this. If you want to start all over, click down here. Now, you will notice you have a gradient line down here from black to white. Think 0 to 255. And up here, it goes from black to white, 0 to 255. This represents the information that's in the image according to brightness. And this is how many of each one of those pixels there are. This line that's going vertical represents how we remap what we have. So when I move it up, you'll notice, well, it gets lighter, which means lighten the image up overall. That's how we kind of visualize it. Let me go ahead and click back down here again. Probably the easiest way for me to demonstrate exactly how this remaps is do this. I'm going to grab this guy right up here and drag him all the way down. So I'm saying to the computer, every pixel in this image from a black to a white, make them all black. And if I go here and move this one up, I get a negative. Now, in color film photography, that is not a true negative. For us, for our purposes, I've reversed it. I've said, computer, every single thing that used to be white, make them black over here. And everything that used to be black down here, make white and do that on a really nice curve. And so you have kind of like a negative. Let's go ahead and click here. Now, as to options, if you click up here, some of these are very similar to the ones that you saw in Levels. Auto Select Parameter. But it also has another one, Auto Select Targeted Adjustment Tool. In other words, when you open up curves for the first time, you want this tool, and we will talk about that, you want that tool selected right away. If we come back over here, Save, Load, and Delete, just like Levels. Show Clipping and Auto Options are exactly like Levels but we do have curves display options. Now in here, we can choose the amounts on light or pigment. So if you look at it, it reverses the curve. Many of you who work in the print industry might be more comfortable seeing it as pigments. It doesn't change what's going on over here. It just changes how we work with it. That's all. You can turn on channel overlays, histograms. Some of these you won't see until you begin working. And you can get a tighter grid if you want one which I usually do. Click OK. The last one, let's go back over here again, is on Reset, of course, and it's easier just to click here. And of course, Close if you don't want it open anymore. Let's get out of there. Come down a little bit. Here are your presets. 
Over here, you can choose a color channel to manipulate colors, or you can choose RGB. Now, remember the difference. If you're on RGB, you're influencing all three channels exactly the same, and you're impacting the tone of the image, lightning and darkening. If you go to a color, you're impacting the actual color, changing things, say, for color correction. Again, the auto button here works just like it did in levels. So do the eyedroppers. Now, down here, we have this button activated, which means I can put things on the curve just like that. Let's go ahead and reset that. This one allows me, if I want to, to draw my curve. And then this one allows me to smooth it out every time I click it. If at any time you want to go back, you can click here, and it will put anchor points there, or those points, exactly where they were to keep that line exactly the way you drew it. This down here, of course, is warning us that we're not really seeing an accurate histogram. It's part of an image cache file. And if we click here, it will give us a more accurate histogram. Now, it doesn't influence what's going on over here, of course. It just influences the accuracy of the histogram that we're working with. Curves is levels on steroids. So I'll tell you what, let's see what it can do for us.